Hey there, art nerds. Today we're taking a look at the 12 piece Arteza half pan watercolor set. We've reviewed a lot of Arteza here on the channel in the past and I have kind of mixed feelings about it. So it'll be interesting to see how I feel about this because I am reviewing their half pan watercolor sets in preparation for two larger reviews. I am also going to be unboxing not one, but two Arteza advent calendars. This is the 12 day calendar and I'm still waiting on my 24 day calendar to arrive because these things are popular and people ordered, like they're back ordered right now because they're kind of the only art supply advent calendar on the market, which is kind of for adults. There's a lot for children, but for adults, which is kind of weird for me because you would think like art snacks and all those subscription boxes would hop on that. And you would think art supply companies would hop on that but no not really is there not a demand i would love an art supply advent calendar anyway i also purchased this huge arteza art kit to review for you guys because every year in december i review a couple art kits because art kits are a, a popular gift and uh, i thought that reviewing the half pan set would not only help me prepare, but it would also give me a good idea of what to expect. So think, cross your fingers for me guys. I'm really hoping I like this set and I hope you guys will like it too. Hey there art nerds. I guess you guys know what we're taking a look at today. Today we are checking out the Arteza 12 unique colors half pans in a metal box, reusable paint when dried on palette, non-toxic 12 watercolor set. Boy, is that a mouthful. So the larger versions of these half pan sets seem to be sold out right now. I reviewed their 24 piece tube set in the past and I really did not like it and I donated it so it's gone now. But you can check out that unboxing swatch in the description below as well as in the cards. I disliked it so much I didn't even do a field test which tells you something. But today we're here for a little retribution. I honestly hope I like this set because I bought the big Arteza art set and two of their art advent calendars to review for y'all before Christmas. And it would be a real shame to have spent all that money on uh, something terrible. This was purchased on Amazon and y'all probably know at least a little bit about Arteza by now because I've reviewed several of their products and I'll make sure to link all of those down in the description. My favorite of those would have to be their expert watercolor paper, but even then I found it kind of expensive compared to comparable cotton rag watercolor papers. So they do have their own website. I'll link that for you guys. It's arteza.com. And I wanted to dig a little bit for just some, some more meat about who Arteza is as a company, how long they've been around, you know, that kind of thing. And they're about paid is hilariously scarce. At Arteza, we're not just a business, we're humans, which is exactly what a robot would say. But if you scroll down, there's more fluff that doesn't really tell you anything about where Arteza is located, where it was started, what their real mission statement is, who produces their products, or anything else that is relevant when purchasing and reviewing art supplies. The fluff is fine, I just want that useful meat as well. So you know, kind of browsing around. I went to their careers page, which leads me to believe they're operating out of North Miami Beach, Florida, just because all the positions they're hiring for are out of there. And their site also has a rewards program, but over the years, I found that buying Arteza stuff off Amazon is kind of more cost efficient. The prices are pretty similar, and they're sometimes even lower on Amazon, and I have Prime shipping. There's also an affiliate program, but I've had such a mixed bag with Arteza products personally that I'll just stick with Amazon, which is, by the way, if you use my affiliate links, I see a small bounty which goes towards continuing this channel and is a great way to support the work I do here without all that commitment on Patreon. Snarking aside though, I do like their blog. I like that there's a lot of art tutorials and I love anything that makes art legitimately more accessible to more people. 
So at this point, Arteza basically sells anything art supply related and a lot of craft supplies. They also have a lot of watercolor supplies, tubes, metallics, watercolor pencils, brushes, water brushes, paper, a lot. But they're kind of thin on the half pan front these days. But they do offer their half pans open stock, which is unusual and kind of heartening for a student grade brand that started out on Amazon. No shade, just a lot of those brands don't offer any sort of refills. I'll have that linked for you guys guys all of that in the show notes so make sure you check them out so this particular 12 pan set was $14.99 on the Arteza site or $18.99 on Amazon and I got mine on Amazon because I am all about that prime shipping but I got my advent calendars and I'm still waiting on one of them to come in through the Arteza site so this review was made possible thanks to the support of my amazing patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so, so much. Let's go ahead and unbox and swatch the Arteza half pan watercolors. So we have here a cardboard box. It includes a water brush. Flipping it over, it says that these are premium I. I kind of have a hard time with when Arte with like how Arteza labels things because you know they've got like premium and then they've got like expert and I just wish they would use like like Strathmore has series numbers and that's a little bit easier to understand but you know they've been around long enough that I need to just get with the program. So it says 12 unique colors. Although when you look at it, this is a pretty standard color collect or color selection for watercolors. I'm not complaining, just not not really that unique. Comes in a metal box, reusable paint when dried on the palette, which is really really standard for good quality watercolors, and non-toxic, which tells me they're going to be using hues rather than cadmiums or cobalts. So the colors inside the set are lemon yellow, cadmium Cadmium light yellow, cadmium light red, amaranth, Prussian blue, deep ocean blue, jade green, fern green, yellow ochre, rust red, sepia brown, and noir. And they are for not for, they are not for not to three sad onions. They are non-toxic and it says that it is an American company, but it's designed in the USA and manufactured in the People's Republic of China. And I'm not really surprised by that. I just... Wish they were more transparent about that. And Arteza watercolors are available in a variety of sets and colors. Now here, now this is interesting and my friend in Delaware could explain this better than me. Remember how we were talking about North Miami Beach and Florida? Over here, they're listed as doing business in Delaware. And that's actually not uncommon. A lot of companies do that. It has something to do with less stringent taxes, I believe. So uh, for some reason, our metal tin is shrink wrapped in plastic. I think you guys know how I feel about that and the excessive waste. And our water brush pin is in a cardboard box. So, you know, I'd like to see them kind of cut back on the packaging. There isn't really a need for all of the, all of the wrapping, but hopefully the half pans inside aren't excessively wrapped. Inside our palette of metal, we have our 12 colors. Each one is honestly kind of minimally wrapped, which I really, really do appreciate. And it kind of reminds me of the Etcher palette I reviewed not too long ago. So, uh, you know, at the end of the Student Grade Showdown videos, I usually do a comparison. You know I'm going to be comparing it to the Etcher palette because I wonder if they're being manufactured in the same company or in the same factory and just white labeled. So we also have our swatch card. This seems like it's a cellulose swatch card, which 
isn't the worst. Um, I appreciate that they've included a swatch card. They've also included some instructions on how to watercolor. Speaking of, if you're new to watercolor and you'd like to learn more about watercolor, I've got loads of great playlists designed to help you guys get started with your watercolor from tutorials on basic techniques to step-by-step -step painting projects to more in-depth watercolor tutorials and walkthroughs where not only do I talk about techniques and process, but I also talk about my thought process process at the time, what I'm trying to achieve and how I'm trying to achieve it. And I will link all of those playlists for you guys down in the description below. And it would really, truly, honestly mean a lot to me if you check them out because they are my pride and joy. I also have a great series on watercolor called Watercolor Basics. It's written out for my friends who don't enjoy video tutorials, which I am one of them. I learn better reading than I do from watching. I don't know what it is. And I've got some really great step-by-step -step stuff in there as well. So I'll link that. And a little mini disclosure, I am a watercolor comic artist. That is the lens which I view watercolor. It's the lens which I review watercolor. So uh, that's what I bring that's special to the table is that a lot of my watercolor painting has been painting seven inch carol which is my ongoing watercolor comic and you guys can read it for free as a web comic at seven inch carol.com or if you're a fan of the dead tree format like i am you can get volume one and two in the natto shop i'll link that for you guys as well but i wanted to disclose that because a lot of what i'm going to point out that i i might have a problem with or that i might really like that's coming from my experience as a watercolor comic arter, art art <laughs> watercolor comic artist and an illustrator so you know we all have different needs as artists if you're coloring for relaxation your needs are going to be different than if you are doing fine art watercolor which are going to be different if you are doing co convention commissions which are going to be different if you're doing watercolor comics so I like to just kind of let you guys know where I'm coming from really early on so that uh if we've got some something in common you'll you'll kind of get where I'm coming from. And if we don't, then you can just kind of take what I say with a grain of salt. But that's also why I break these reviews up into two parts. The unbox and swatch, which is more general interest, applies to a lot of different artists. And then the field test, where I actually paint a watercolor illustration with the paints that I'm reviewing. And that allows me to really talk about the paints. It allows me to see what they're capable of, really put them through their paces and test them out. So hopefully you guys will stick around, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell so YouTube lets you know when I update but you know YouTube's been really awful about letting people know that so if you follow my patreon page which costs you nothing at all just to follow it I do a weekly backer update where I share everything that went live for the week over there and that's just kind of like a newsletter that helps people keep up with what's going on that's a great way to make sure you never miss an update and I'm gonna be reviewing a lot of affordable inexpensive student grade watercolors as part of my watercolor student grade showdown so you know you guys don't want to miss any of that so I highly recommend you head on over to patreon.com slash soup and just click that follow button but enough preamble we need to go ahead and get going we need to unbox and swatch these watercolors and that starts by removing these belly bands from these paints all right, so we're gonna take a quick look at our half pans. I'm looking for pigment information here because even though we get the names on the box, it would be great to have pigment information. Doesn't seem to be on the half pans, doesn't seem to be on the card, and uh, <laughs> their their watercolor information is, is kind of, kind of scarce but I do appreciate that they include that and I know their blog has more tutorials so I'm really not gonna fault them for that because they are trying to make it accessible I do wish one caveat is that somewhere on their packaging they should mention that their blog is such a great resource because it is and they should sing about it and yo Arteza if you ever want to collaborate hit me up I love writing blog posts about making art not too bad not too much waste I did however well anyway so one of my complaints is I really would have liked it if the pigment information the light fast information 
the transparency information, if that was available at all. I'm gonna dig, but it wasn't on their site and it's not on the box and it's not on the belly bands and it's not on that. And come on, Arteza, make this easier for us, unless you're hiding something. Uh, Etcher included that kind of information, I believe, on the belly band. And that was one of the reasons I kept the belly bands and went to all the effort of making sure I got them back on the half pants. Another thing is these are kind of chalky already and uh, they just seem kind of dry. And this one is shedding some white. That's always a really good sign. And these things, uh, let me see if I can get it to recreate what it did when I unboxed it. There we go. I, I pulled a smidgen, but only because I had jammed it back in there for the time lapse. So these are very, very, very much extruded watercolor paints. And in some of my other videos, I talk a fair amount about why I'm not really a fan of extruded paints. I'll just do it really quickly now. So they tend to be a bit drier, a bit more compressed than their poured counterparts. In my experience, they also seem to contain more optical brighteners, but that could just be a bias thing. And uh, they just fall out of their half pans, I like so. Now, I could definitely use a little bit of gum Arabic to glue them down, but frankly, I think Arteza should have done that. And this was one of a few half pans that just fell out while I was, you know, removing their belly band. So that's not a great sign. I will say though, I am a sucker for these transparent half pans. I love it. I am a child of the 90s, so anything transparent is good. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and use their included swatch sheet to do some swatching ins. And then we're gonna use my cotton rag paper, my Blick Studio cotton rag paper to do some real swatches. Cause honestly, when I'm doing this student grade showdown, I want all of these to have the best chance possible. I wanna be able to give the fairest review I can. And that means I gotta give them the best shot. Now, I'm gonna say real quick, those of you guys watch my reviews, y'all know I don't really like water brushes. Like I'm just kind of biased against them in general because I'm kind of heavy handed. This is not the worst water brush I've reviewed. It's, it's branded Arteza, so a little bit of thought at least went into it. Where the thought seems to run out is it's not actually small enough to fit in the palette itself. There's no room for it. So, you know, that's not the end of the world, but some companies do have really, really tiny water brushes. Something else I would have liked to see it since they, they have a bunch of these is like those little caps that you put them in so that you can carry the brush and the belly separately. Um, other than that, not, not really that bad of a deal. Um, not overly cheap plastic, seems fairly sturdy. None of the bristles were falling out or, you know, mushed all over the place. So some care has gone into this. I'm not gonna be, we're not gonna talk about this water brush any further today because I'm biased against water brushes. So I'm going to be swatching these with my favorite, a silver black velvet watercolor brush. Again, cause I am all about giving these the best chance I possibly can. Speaking of the best chance I possibly can, get that back in there. I'm also going to pre-activate these with just a little bit of clean water. I say that, but apparently my spray bottle has other thoughts. There we go, had to elevate it a little bit. Gonna pre-activate it so that it can kind of soak up some water, loosen up those pigments, and be ready for swatching. Something else I noticed that's kind of weird is this set doesn't include an ultramarine blue. This seems like their warmer blue. It's, it's either meant to be a cobalt or maybe a cerulean, and it's just kind of unusual in a 12 color mixing set to not have an ultramarine blue. So that, that's a little bit of a hmm for me. It makes color mixing a little more challenging in my opinion, but I am happy that they wasted no space with a white. Colors in this set are lemon yellow, cadmium light yellow, cadmium light red, amaranth, Prussian blue, deep ocean blue, jade green, fern green, yellow ochre, rust red, sepia brown, and noir. And there is no pigment or light fast information really available for these watercolors. And I know I talk about that a little bit uh, earlier on, but that's just really pretty disappointing. Come on, Arteza. 
The included paper for swatching is a cellulose watercolor paper. It does a fine job as a palette map. And I do actually really like when brands include a pre-labeled palette map for me to fill out. It's just so handy because otherwise for the field test, I'm gonna have to make a palette map anyway, just to be able to decide what colors are where. So we've swatched the Arteza watercolors on their included paper. Now it's time to swatch them on cotton rag paper. And for this, I am using a Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor block. This is the same paper that I've been using for all of our student grade showdown tests. And this is the fairest chance I can give these paints. So while I was swatching over here, I tried to find their pigment info and they don't make that available and people have emailed them. In fact, there's a whole thread on wet canvas and I'll link that in the description for you guys. Several people have asked and they are not willing to provide the information for the half pans. And while their pigment information is available for the tubes, apparently the half pans and the tubes use different pigments. They did provide their light fast information with it having a plus symbol and the plus symbol represents the light fastness with one plus being excellent. And apparently these are all just one plus if I'm reading that correctly, which really makes me raise an eyebrow. Uh, I'm not currently doing light fast testing myself, but I do have a goal over on Patreon where I'm gonna build a light fast testing rig and get it all set up and test basically everything I can get my hands on. So if that sounds cool to you, if you're interested in seeing what brands can actually stand the test of time, you can join me and together we can earn enough to actually make that goal a reality. But basically they're really not sharing it. In fact, the best answer we could get was Marshall on wet canvas emailing them and receiving this response. I completely understand. After asking around, it seems as though we don't have the pigment information for our watercolor half pans just yet, unlike our other supplies. However, we're actively working on having this information available in the near future. While we don't currently have an estimated time as to when the information will be available, please know that we'll always stand behind our 100% customer satisfaction guarantee, no matter what. Wow, that's super heartwarming and definitely builds a lot of confidence in me. Uh, it also definitely points to the fact that they don't manufacture these. These are just a white label product that they're buying from someone else. And if they would tell us who they're getting them from, maybe we could dig up the information then, but that's not gonna happen. So I am going to go ahead and swatch these on this cotton rag paper. As I'm swatching them, I'm gonna be looking for a few different parameters. We're gonna see how quickly these can activate. I went ahead and already re-spritzed them, re-wetted them with water to give them their best and fairest chance. We're also gonna be looking at how quickly they pollute the wash water, how opaque they are. And opacity is not any indicator really of quality with individual colors. Some watercolors are going to be naturally more opaque than others, like yellow ochre would be a more opaque color. So we are gonna, we're really looking for variation in terms of opacity. Now, they also don't provide opacity information either. So it's not like we can compare what they're saying versus what we're seeing. Kind of like when I did the, why can't I remember what brain, ah, ah, ah. I'm sorry, the Artie Box watercolors, they disclosed that most of their colors were semi-opaque to opaque. So it kinda, you know what you're dealing with. With this, we don't even get that, which, that, that's literally just about formulation and them testing it out themselves. But anyway, we're also gonna be looking at granulation. We're gonna be looking at how these color wash out. And then later we're gonna be looking up, looking at how liftable these colors are. After we complete our swatches, we're gonna do a, a little bit of color mixing. We're gonna do optical and atomic mixing. And then we're gonna do the wet into wet test where we completely saturate some watercolor paper and then try to slap on as many pigments as possible and just kind of take a look at what happens. While swatching on their included swatch card, I noticed that these have kind of a milky look to them. Aha, uh -huh, probably optical brighteners and tend to really glob up on the brush. So that's something you're gonna wanna be careful with. 
On the Blick cotton rag paper, I noticed that these glob up on the brush even more. So as they absorb water, they are really going to want to stick to your brush. So you got to be careful with these. I would recommend using a palette to help paint and color control. They also muddy the water very quickly, which you guys will see in just a minute. I would not say that these are premium. I wouldn't say these are high end student grade either. So far, I would also not say they're an improvement over the tube paints. And there's some granulation to these, but not a whole lot. Neither of the blues are really that granulating, but fern green, yellow ochre, and sepia kind of are. While these are still drying, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our color mixing test. But as I'm doing all this, I'm kind of, you know, asking myself several questions like, where does this rank compared to the other student grade watercolors I've reviewed with you guys? As well as how do I feel about these half pants compared to when I reviewed the tubes? So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later on. We're gonna have, we're gonna talk comparison, but we're also gonna talk about whether or not the tubes or the half pans are really a better value color for color. For our color mixing, I'm gonna go ahead and start my optical mixing grid by just putting down my primaries. It was really easy to find the prairies primaries in a set this small. So when it comes to color mixing, some colors are easy to mix, the warmer orange, greens, and a half decent purple from using the deep ocean blue in the amaranth, and some aren't, like I wasn't really able to mix a Payne's gray. Granulation is more noticeable in two color mixes while they're still wet, but they sort of disappear after they dry, and colors dry kind of scaly and grainy. And I'm gonna zoom in in a minute after they've dried to show you guys. So with the optical mixing, there's a little bit of reactivation with the cooler and warmer yellows, but not so much with the reds or blues, and they do seem to glaze decently well, but I did notice that these get used up really fast. So these really don't stand up too well to mixing and uh, the, the optical mixing is a little bit better. There's some reactivation, but I'm starting to notice a trend with certain really inexpensive watercolors that just end up not working for me at all is the one thing that they do really well is they handle glazing like a champ. And I guess it's just because they're so dang sturdy. I don't really know. But what I really wanted to point out to you guys, and hopefully my camera will pick it up, is the atomic color mixing where we're smashing two colors together to make a third. So yeah, we are able to make some secondary colors. Uh, they're all kind of faded. And hopefully you guys can see this. They're actually kind of scaly. So that's not actually my camera creating that that is the paints themselves and that's something I've noticed with paints that tend to include a lot of optical brighteners 
is you get this kind of scaliness. And it really wouldn't surprise me if the reason they don't want to disclose their pigments is because there's a whole lot of PW6 and extenders included to make them look bright and beautiful in the half pans, but not mix so, so well. So next we're going to do the lift test. So I'm going to use a silver black velvet flat and a paper towel and we're just gonna see how well these lift and what we're looking for is some colors to lift some to not lift so much but we want to see a variety we don't want everything to be equally staining or equally lifting but before we do that I want to zoom in real close one more time and just show you guys how quickly these paints are getting used up just from this unboxing swatch and that's really pretty typical for really inexpensive student grade paints that use a lot of extenders and a lot of fillers because you have to use up more paint to get the same saturation that you would get with a higher quality paint that doesn't use as many extenders or fillers so that's one of the false economies of really cheap paint is that you may end up buying more and more and more and more and more more often than you would if you were using a better quality, a higher quality paint where a little bit of color can really go a long way. Now, fortunately, if you're tied to using these Arteza watercolors, they do sell refills, but I don't think I'm alone <laughs> by a long shot in saying that these are just really not worth it. The lift test shows that these are all pretty lifting, which is kind of disappointing because with watercolors, you want to see different degrees of liftability because different pigments are going to lift differently. And generally, I feel like when they all lift about the same, it probably has more to do with the binder than with the pigments themselves. Kind of disappointingly, but not surprisingly, I am seeing that all of these colors are fairly lifting and they're all fairly lifting by the same amount. Now, the binder could be the reason why they're all lifting. Maybe they're just not adhering to the paper or maybe it's the humidity outside or maybe it's the way I've applied them. You can see some chalkiness there with the deep ocean blue. But honestly, I think it probably really boils down to the quality of these paints themselves and it doesn't really give you much to look forward to. So I have one more test I want to do this evening. That would be the mud test. So I'm going to be using another sheet of the Blick Studio Cotton Rag watercolor paper. Let's get all up close and personal with these paints. And not mud test, why do I keep calling it the mud test? The wet and to wet test, mud test, very similar test to be real. And I use that when I'm trying out different watercolor papers to see if the paper can handle the paint or if the paint just turned to mud on the paper. So very similar, just kind of coming at it from the other side of the equation where we're working with a paper we know and a paint we're not so familiar with. So with the wet into wet test, we're going to go ahead and totally saturate this block of Blick Studio cotton rag watercolor paper that's going to give us plenty of water for the paints to diffuse into. And I noticed that granulation is a bit more apparent with the wet into wet, although I think some of it is also from the scaling that seems to happen when these mix. And I think the scaling is due to the inclusion of so many extenders and optical brighteners. They are a bit gritty in some areas and not really granulation, like just grittiness. And in some areas, like the yellow on the red, you can see a white outline instead of a nice clean blend or diffusal. I have some serious concerns about how these are going to hold up in the field test. our wet into wet test has had a chance to dry fully overnight and I'm just going to move it closer to you guys so hopefully you can see some of the issues I was talking about regarding like scaling or these white rings that's I think that's probably the optical brighteners but I don't exactly know for sure you can see the scaling there it's definitely something I've noticed with inexpensive student grade watercolors that do contain a lot of optical brighteners so 
just kind of zooming in to show you guys what I'm talking about. That's not something you really want to be dealing with when you're painting a watercolor illustration, especially if you're somebody who likes to do a lot of layers or if you like to really do a lot of wet into wet. These are going to start causing problems for that. We've got quite a table full here, don't we? So these are some of the watercolors that I thought were the most comparable to the Arteza watercolors. I actually did not grab my three favorites, the ones you guys hear me talking about all the time. We'll get to that in just a second. But I have the Etchers, I have the Artie Box, I have the Mungyo, I have the Simi Art, and I have the Giorgione watercolors. And we're gonna we're going to kind of go through and talk about how they compare against the Arteza watercolors and which I would recommend over them. And we have kind of a wide array of price points over here. So the Arteza watercolors over here are about $14.99 on their site, $18 to $17.99 on Amazon, but that includes the shipping. And I believe with Arteza, you don't get free shipping until you spend a certain amount of money. So you know, to me, if you're just getting the watercolors, Amazon is going to be the better value. Then we have the Etcher watercolors, which are another very obvious white label. They do have a lot of care in their packaging. And there's a lot of similarities, I thought, between how the Arteza were presented and how the Etcher were presented. In fact, initially, I thought maybe they were getting them from the same manufacturer. But after swatching the... Arteza, I no longer think that's the case. I actually think the Etcher watercolors, while very expensive for a 24 piece student grade palette, at least that's how I feel. I feel they're kind of overpriced compared to some of the competition. They actually perform quite well. You get a really nice color selection. There's some nice color granulation. Of course, now that I'm looking at the wet into wet test, I do see some scaling, but not nearly as much as I was seeing with the Arteza. Let me grab the Arteza for you. Okay, so you see how this, there's like a white circle around it. It doesn't just diffuse out. What we really want to see is we want to see these really soft diffusals of color. Now, over here, I do see a little bit of scaling, but all in all, there's not really any scaling with the Etcher watercolors. And I would dearly love to know who they're white labeling from so I could actually get a basis of comparison in terms of price. But uh, I'm sure they're not telling. So if you guys know, let me know. Something else I liked about the Etcher watercolors is they actually disclose their pigments, which is something Arteza refuses or cannot do. Uh, I think they're kind of hiding behind that claim on that one, but that's just my personal opinion. So I think in terms of quality, the Etcher watercolors are better. And in terms of quantity, I would say they're probably, so this is around a little bit under $20. And this I believe is $45. So it's quite a bit more expensive. It does perform a lot better, but at $45, it's starting to get into that category where I would say, if you're going to spend $45 on student grade paints, you might as well get a small set of professional grade paints, or you could get the Rosa Galleria, which are not shown here, but that I reviewed not too long ago that are professional grade paints and they handle quite well. And they're in the $35 category. So Sorry, Etcher, you are forever going to be compared against the Rosa Galleria I'm found lacking. Same goes for the Artie Box watercolors. So these are a 48 half pan tin. All of these, I think, come in metal tins, although the format of the metal tins do vary. And I reviewed the Artie Box just before reviewing the Arteza, although I think how I release these is going to be different because I do have some other Arteza things I want to review before Christmas. So um, this was another $35-ish palette, 48 colors. It came with a pack of paper. Not super impressed with the pack of paper. It also came with a water brush. Oh, look, y'all. The water brush actually fits inside the palette. So this one is kind of weird, I think, because to me... Some of the colors feel kind of flat, like some of these pinks, there's just no granulation to them whatsoever. And it's quite a bit like when I'm using dye-based watercolors. And while dye-based watercolors have their place, I really love the granulation of watercolor. So we do have some granulation here, but even with the Artie Box watercolors, I'm not seeing 
any of those rings of optical brighteners and I'm also not seeing any scaling. This has more of like a tie dye effect. I would have liked to have seen more granulation, but at least I'm not seeing some of the problems that the Arteza watercolors seem to be throwing up. Now, one of my complaints about the Artibox watercolors is that they're not as saturated as you would want. They're not as saturated as you would expect. I think the, the Arteza ones might be a little more saturated, but not a whole lot. I think the yellow ochre is a little bit better than the yellow ochre in the arty box, but all in all, they seem kind of comparable to me, honestly. I think it boils down more to color selection, and if I'd been able to get a hold of the 48 of the Arteza, I think it would have been easier to make a call as to which one of these is a better palette. So that is the Arty box. Next, we have the Mungyo watercolors, and I have to be careful because this table is just loaded with watercolors from the student grade showdown. Hopefully you guys are enjoying that. So does the Arteza one have screening on it? No, it has a sticker on it. The Mungyo has been screened. So I've talked about the Mungyo watercolors a lot outside of their own unboxing swatch review. These are a popular brand for other brands like Jane Davenport or Prima Marketing to white label. If you're going to get those, you might as well get these. It's much cheaper and hey, you can get 48 colors in one set. But if you wanna buy the refills, Jane Davenport does sell the refills for these. So my biggest complaint with the Mungyo watercolors, and it's been my complaint for a really long time, is they're really kind of gritty. And the pans themselves have a lot of surface grit and texture, but the paints also, when applied to paper, have a lot of surface grit and texture. They also have a lot of opacity. A lot of the pigment, a lot of the paint, glops up on your brush. So you will go through the Mungyo watercolors pretty quickly, I would say. I think though, and I do have, I'm a little biased in that I have some prior experience with the Mungyo in the form of Jane Davenport and Prima Marketing. I've done some field tests with them before. They're serviceable paints. They're not bad paints. And I believe the price point for these is around 35, which makes them less expensive than the Etcher paints and a little bit are around the same price point as the Rosa paints. I think the Rosa paints though are higher quality than the Mungyo paints, but you do get lots of bright colors and these could be a good option for people who are doing like, they want a, a big punch of color. So brush calligraphers might happen to like these. Here is the wet into wet test for them. You can see, or hopefully you guys can see like where the granulation starts kind of throwing, not granulations, the grit, because this is granulation where we do have some areas of, you know, granulating particles seeping into the cotton rag paper. Um, the, this is more just like overabundance of paint particles on your brush and not all of them kind of dissolved into the paint. It's a little bit noticeable in the center of these as well. Generally, I find Mungyo watercolors at least in their Prima and their Jane Davenport forms were easier to work with when I was using a palette for mixing and not going just straight from the half pan. So I'm hoping that the field tests for these will give them a bit of redemption. As it is, I would say that I think these have fewer optical brighteners than these. And uh, I think the wet into wet on this is just so patchy and so chalky. Um, it's very difficult for me to recommend the Arteza watercolors over the Mungyo watercolors. You know, warts and all for the Mungyo watercolors because they do have some issues. So next we have the Simi Art watercolors. This is a much larger watercolor palette. This is a 90 color palette, but a lot of those colors are, we have some neons in here, but a lot of them are also shimmer colors that I just wouldn't find that usable. Uh, they're not even particularly good shimmer colors. There are better, much better shimmer colors on the market. So these I had high hopes for and I really didn't like them. They are very affordable for the price and they do come, no, that doesn't make any sense. They're cheap. They're cheap watercolors, y'all. Um, but they, do, they perform like cheap watercolors. They do come with their own water brush. 
uh, at least this palette is designed to hold the water brush. One problem is this doesn't have a stopper, so you can't actually bring the water with you, which makes them less ideal for, you know, plein air painting. Yes, you can bring a bottle of water and an eyedropper, but it that, that little stopper would add some usefulness to it. So my problem with the Simi watercolors, I have, I have several problems with them. They're very, they're challenging to activate, but once they're activated, they really glob up on your brush. So you really have to scrub at them to get any color. They are very desaturated for what they are. They really don't have much color or much impact to them. And because of this, you're gonna end up using these up quicker, trying to get that color than you would with a higher grade watercolor. I found the color mixes to be really, uninspired and unsaturated so in that regard i think the arteza does a lot better and with the wet into wet test we didn't really have too many problems with optical brighteners creating rings around our watercolors they kind of diffuse out nicely but it's very desaturated they just don't have a lot of impact when you put them in water they just kind of fall apart so I was very disappointed in the Simi art watercolors. I guess I would say I'd recommend the Arteza watercolors over the Simi watercolors. And Simi is one of those companies that actually white labels for other companies. So you will probably see these watercolors, see me these watercolors in other variations under other brand names. I have no intention of reviewing any of those. And then finally, we have the Giorgione watercolors. This is the slightly more expensive palette. They have a palette that gets even more expensive than this, but all the Giorgione palettes are really pretty cheap. This is the $14.99 palette, and I did a two-way review with this one against their $10.99 palette. So this is another 48 half pan palette. I was really, with this student grade showdown, I was really trying to go with the larger palettes because I know that's what's really appealing to people who are shopping student grade. You want a lot of color at a lower price point. It might be great for people who don't want to amass a horde of watercolor tubes and half pans, unlike me, who would sleep on them every night if I could get away with it. These were weird. They're very cheap. They're similar to the Cool Bank watercolors that I also reviewed. You do get a water brush. Oh, look, the water brush actually fits in the palette. You also get a traditional brush that is not worth much. And you get a scrubbing sponge. You get plenty of mixing surfaces. The way they choose to put these in the palette is just a very thin, cheap plastic tray, whereas these at least utilize, you know, you could really reutilize this palette. But I believe... These are standard size half pans. So as you use them up, you could put in your preferred half pans if you wish to reuse this palette. These perform better than the Simi Art watercolors. They do have more saturation to them. I would say they don't have as much saturation to them as the Arteza, but frankly, in terms of saturation, I'm not sure if that's just the paints globbing onto the brush or if that's actual, you know, increased saturation, more pigment, more pigment depth. These are really not prone to lifting. I think they might use a different binder than some of the other watercolors. They also didn't get, I mean, they do get used up pretty quickly. You can see from those divots just from these tests, um, but maybe not as quickly as the Arteza. And in terms of wet and to wet, they also perform better. Everyone is performing better than the Arteza today in terms of the wet and to wet test. You can see some scaliness. You can see some patches where it might be the included optical brighteners and extenders just kind of affecting how the paint actually goes onto the paper. But when you compare them against the Arteza in terms of just like the patchiness and the scaliness you get from the Arteza, I feel like it's night and day. Now, you might look at this and think, oh, but Becca, that's just a lot of granulation. Let me zoom in for y'all for a second. So you might think, oh, that's just a lot of granulation. And it's it's really not, it's really not. Um, I'm the best way to show you guys why this isn't really what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of granulation would be to go get something that did have a lot of granulation. And I like how that granulation looks. So give me a second. Okay, so these are some of my Daniel Smith watercolors that just happen to be super granulating colors. So with super granulating colors, you will get, you know, a lot of 
pigment particles just kind of falling down into the pieces of the paper and that's what creates the look of granulation. Or you might get colors that uh, when they dry, you can see two colors in one, like with Moon Glow. Or you can see, this one's a good example of that too. I think that's Lunar Blue. So you get like kind of a grayish blue, but you also get kind of a teal blue in there. With mineral-based pigments like Sleeping Beauty Turquoise, or Lunar Earth, or Potter's Pink. Well, this is not that, anyway. Uh, <laughs> you will definitely start seeing more of that granulation. So granulation isn't grittiness. It's hard to explain the difference, but you will feel like when you're actually painting and the pigments are wet, you can tell the difference. Grittiness is paint particles that could dissolve and they haven't really dissolved and they just leave like a gritty texture on the surface of the paper. Granulation, they fully dissolve. They're not going to dissolve any further. That's the particle size. And the difference here is that it's, man, I'm sorry, I'm really struggling in that I wish there was like something really definitive that I could point to. I wish one of these colors had actual granulation in it, like a good ultramarine blue, because then I could use that as the example. But with these swatches, you can see everything, for the most part, there's a couple of exceptions, but everything is kind of milled to the same fineness. In these swatch tests where we haven't mixed them with any other color and it's just water, we can see that everything is kind of the same granulation. And then everything kind of lifts the same amount as well. If these were really finely milled watercolors in a set that has some granulating colors, if everything wasn't uniformly milled, there would be some colors that are more prone to staining and some colors that are more prone to lifting. And the more finely granulated colors would be more prone to staining and the more granulating colors would probably be more prone to lifting. So with this, there's just a lot of red flags here that it's a challenge to articulate because there just isn't as much information about student grade watercolors and what pigments they're using and what binders they're using as there is about professional grade watercolors because frankly, most student grade brands want to hide this information. They don't want you to know how cheap they are and some of these student grade brands want you to think that their student grade product is really a professional grade product, even though it handles like a student grade product. So, you know, one day I'm gonna sit down and write a whole lot about student grade watercolors and some of the common problems and try to come up with a vocabulary and try to come up with salient examples against professional grade products, not do a video on it, just a giant blog post. And that'll give me something that I can kind of point to and that'll help me kind of collect my thoughts on why this is not really granulation and this is not what you want. The best way for me to prove this to you guys is for me to do a field test with these and just kind of walk you guys through the process and that'll help me really articulate all the areas where it starts to become a problem the way I did with the Mia watercolors. But honestly, after looking at all these other watercolors, that I've reviewed and I actually had hopes for the Arteza like I absolutely did not buy them to just sit here and savage them Arteza is a pretty popular brand a lot of people use it they have money to throw at influencers you know they have some stuff that they're doing that's okay but I have reviewed so many Arteza products that <laughs> underperformed grossly were overpriced that just left me really just dissatisfied with the product that it seems like I've gotten a vendetta against them that I don't have. So let me zoom back out for y'all. That way we can see everything that's on the table. So of these six, because the Simi Art is hiding, of the six, if I were going to rank these in terms of products you'd be happy with, not considering price, it would be Etcher, then Mungyo, then Artie Box, then Giorgione, then Arteza, then Simi Art. 
Of course, price does play a factor and that kind of complicates these, this because I really think the etchers are very overpriced. So price, ugh, but I also think painting with bad paints is a painful experience. So um, if I had to rank them in terms of price, it would probably, in terms of price versus value and enjoyment, it would probably be Mungyo, then huh, Artie Box, then Arteza, then Giorgione, then Etcher, because Etchers are pretty good, but they're overpriced than semi art but this is all all that ranking is subject to change because i still need to do the field test and like with the mia watercolors my opinions might totally change after i actually sit down and attempt or paint and a watercolor illustration with these so here's some clips from the Mei Liang pigments field test just to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about because it's still packed away. These are not really full size half pans and they are included in a little plastic tray, but they're still kind of my favorite student grade watercolors. These handle much more like the Paul Rubens, which are their professional grade older siblings. And you can get some really bright, beautiful color, do some lovely wet into wet techniques and basically handle them almost like you would professional grade watercolors for around $30. So these are still my favorite. They still have my heart. And if you're gonna buy the Arteza watercolors, please think twice and consider the Mei Liang pigments watercolors instead. I think you'll be a lot happier with them without having spent a whole lot more money. And I have absolutely no relationship whatsoever with Mei Liang or with Superior or with any of these brands I'm talking about today. All opinions are my own and they're based on my own experiences like with this field test here and with my experience using watercolors for comics and painting for over a decade. So this is a segment from the Shapiro Farben field test. These really surprised me because in the initial unboxing swatch, I didn't like them all that much. But when I actually started using them and painting with them, they were a lot more capable than I expected them to be. They're not perfect. They definitely handle more like student grade than like a professional grade but there's a lot of pros to these watercolors that kind of overcome their shortcomings and if you're interested in any of these I hope you guys will check out the full field test and unswatch, unbox and swatch videos because I can go way more in depth but these were able to layer like a champ they've got some really interesting colors included that makes them very easy to paint with especially for someone who's painting on the go like a commission artist or somebody who's making cards and while they don't handle wet into wet as well as I would have liked and can be a little bit chalky and they do look like student grade paints like the resulting illustration I painted does look like a student grade illustration they're really not bad at all and then finally we have the superior folding palette and I love this goofy palette this thing hits way harder than it should it's about the same price as the Mei Liang pigments the format is totally different it's really not a practical palette but the paint themselves are valid and pretty dang good and I'm going to be reviewing more superior products in the future every time I review something from superior they really take me by surprise with their innovation these things handle wet into wet like total champs they also handle layering quite well and I feel like the end watercolor illustration what I was able to produce doesn't really look like student grade work at all and that's what I'm looking for in student grade watercolors you can cut corners here and there you can do things a little bit more cheaply and still have a product that's an absolute joy to paint with and this superior product is just that one of the downsides is it takes up a lot of space when it's unfolded and I would say it's not really suitable for plain air painting, but it's a lot of fun and very economical. So what about the pros and cons? Well, the pros 
Arteza makes a lot of products and also makes a lot of sets and kits. So there's already an existing ecosystem of Arteza products to use these with, but I'm not sure if that's a pro. There's also saturated color, particularly straight from the half pan. So, you know, some of those student grade watercolors that I've reviewed, they're just really kind of anemic in terms of color. These do have a lot of color in them. But what about the cons? They're kind of pricey compared to other student grade watercolors. It also seems like they're not selling their 48 pan palette. This is the little 12 pan palette. And I kind of feel like since so many any of the other sets I've reviewed in this showdown are the 48 pan palettes. It's not necessarily the fairest review I wish it could be. I wish I could have been able to get a hold of one of the 24 or 48 half pan palettes, but those are not available. Their tube watercolors are available, I think in 96 colors, and there is pigment information available for those, but I reviewed those a while back and I really did not like those. So, I can't necessarily say those are better or reviewing those would be a fairer comparison either. And these contain a lot of optical brighteners. And it's really apparent when you're doing wet into wet artwork. So maybe like backgrounds or maybe gradients or transitions. And I feel like these are going to have that student grade look so much like the Mia watercolors when, with a completed illustration. So I'm not really looking forward to that, but I'm really hoping I'm wrong. So I tried to download the original video where I'm reviewing the Arteza tubes. I can download the paper videos. I can download the Twi marker videos, but for some reason, the one video I really want to download and time lapse and be able to voice over for you guys, I just can't. I've tried several different methods and I don't know. I don't know. So I wanted to have that for you guys. I admit that would be so much more appealing than what we've got now, but this is what we've got. So I'm going to work with it. So um, I wanted to kind of compare them against the tubes, but I gave away the tubes a really long time ago. So, you know, that's why I wanted that footage. But I really did not like the Arteza tube paints. I tried them straight from the tube and dried in half pants, and I found them to be comparable with Reeves watercolors. I've gotten a lot of comments on that video on how I could fix some of the problems with those watercolors. And while I really, really do appreciate that, and those are some wonderful resources for people who that's what they got and that's what they're gonna use, I was reviewing them and pointing out the problems so, you know, I was not interested in fixing or salvaging something that I shouldn't have to fix or salvage. That's not to say I'm not grateful for those comments. I truly am because they're going to help other people. I'm just saying that when I'm reviewing stuff in general, I'm not necessarily going to like fix it. I appreciate the troubleshooting stuff because that does help people, but I'm not going to necessarily turn around and do those things. However, with the Arteza watercolors, I actually did glue them back in the half pans using gum Arabic, or I might've used Aquazole, and I have a video on that as well. But uh, my biggest problem was how they would just crack and fall out of the half pans. And I figure that if you're paying for something like that in general, that's not, it happens from time to time, but all of them did that to the point where they had become just unsalvageable. I couldn't keep adding gum Arabic and trying to glue them back together because they would have been more gum Arabic than actual watercolor. Um, you can also apparently use glycerin to kind of help with some of the problems that cheaper watercolors can have. I thought that was a very helpful tip, especially for people who, again, that's what they have and that's what they're going to use. So you guys should definitely check those comments out. But I donated those tubes and I cleaned out the half pans and the palette so I no longer have them for direct comparison. All of this preamble aside, I found the Arteza tube watercolors basically unsuitable to my painting style and unusable. I don't like the Arteza half pans and I don't recommend them, but they're already in my preferred format, i.e. half pans. Generally with student grade watercolors, the tube version has a better chance of performing well since there's less likely to be a lot of extenders and optical brighteners. And generally I prefer to dry them out in half pans for later use. But the Arteza tubes were not suitable for that and the Arteza half pans are already in that format, which puts them a step ahead. While I dislike both and can recommend neither, I will say that the half pans are at, at ugh, 
<laughs> Sorry, I will say that the half pants are at least come with a usable palette and a half decent water brush and are therefore a step ahead of the tubes in my opinion. Now the tubes do come with pigment information and they do have a larger color range. So if those are things you're looking for, the tubes might be a better fit for you. Really, it kind of boils down to your personal preferences and your painting style. I don't really work fresh from the tube that often. So that's just not a style that works particularly well for me. But if you do, you may find that you like the Arteza tubes a bit better than the Arteza half pants. So what's my verdict with the Arteza 12 piece solid watercolor set? I was really hoping for better because I have a lot of other Arteza stuff coming for December and I sincerely hope that all of it performs better than this palette did or that the field test salvages this palette because reviewing stuff I know I won't like causes burnout quick and I start sounding really bitter. Plus, my goal is to help you guys make art a habit and consistently reviewing art supplies I know are bad that's not actually helping y'all make art a habit. That's just me complaining for money on YouTube and that's not my goal. Arteza is a popular brand and I've reviewed a lot of their stuff before and a lot of it has been a miss for me. I do really like their cotton rag watercolor paper but I feel like it's kind of expensive compared to other cotton rag papers and I'm probably going to opt to use their paper for the field test rather than my usual Stonehenge mainly because Arteza with Arteza is probably what most people will be doing themselves. Given how popular Arteza products are, I really wish they'd up the quality on their white labeled products and be more transparent with the materials that are going into these products, or at least work harder to get that information from their manufacturers. Everyone says their customer service is top notch, and that's really fantastic, especially in this day and age, because I've been blown off by so many art supply companies. But they also aren't transparent about the materials that they're using to make their art supplies, and it really doesn't strike me that they're trying to improve the quality of what they sell, just the quantity. I mean, just since the last time I did a big Arteza review, they've added so many more products to their lineup. It'd be really great if they focused on creating some higher quality lines, especially since their name is now so ubiquitous. So these are a big old skip for me. There are better, cheaper watercolors, but if you already own these, keep an eye on this space because hopefully we can come up with some ways to make them sing in the field test. didn't go as well as I'd hoped. I did like the Arteza half pans better than the tubes, but maybe not for the right reasons. They definitely have some flaws though, and I'm not sure I can overlook them. But you know what? The true test is in the field test, and that'll be coming up soon. So here are our swatches. I was disappointed that these did not have much granulation. I was also very disappointed that these did not have any pigment information and the light fast information is all excellent. Uh, and the true, the true proof 
came when we did the wet and to wet test and I'm so glad I've introduced that because it's given me a lot of information about these inexpensive watercolors but we could really really see the optical brighteners because you start getting rings around some of the colors where they don't actually diffuse out into the color entirely which is not great so I'm a little bit nervous about how the two advent calendars I ordered and the giant art kit is going to go. But on the plus side, the advent calendars aren't just their watercolor supplies and I've primarily reviewed their watercolor supplies. And the art kit is a metallic mixed media art set. Now they also have a graphic set that I've been kind of heavy eyeballing. Uh, I just, I just, I just gotta stop myself. I can't do all of the kits. We don't make enough money here. But, um, and I'm still waiting for the 24 day set, but these seem to be, at least the advent calendars seem to be kind of project focused and I really like that. That's one of the things I like about Arteza is they do seem to at least Put on the facade of wanting to encourage art and artists. Their blog is pretty good. They offer a wide array of art supplies. I would say their price point is a little high compared to the quality, but that's just that's just my opinion. Um, for people who aren't as experienced with shopping around and waiting for like honey and deals on art supplies, they might not feel the same way. Um, or for someone who's even more savvy than I am and is really good at buying it at just the right time when it hits a sale, you know, you might feel a little bit differently about Arteza. But um, I, I do have hope that they will grow and improve. Now, something I have no they have the weirdest naming scheme, okay? Remember when I was reviewing the papers, we had premium and expert? Okay, well, we have premium here. And then on the back of this thing, no, on the on the front of this thing says premium where did it sit i have there was a thing i just saw it and now i can't find it there was a thing that kind of explained their range and they actually have a pro line which i guess has another lineman's truck i am a lucky girl Anyway, they have a pro line. I don't know if that's like taking the place of their expert line or what, but earlier in the video, I mentioned how I wish they would just name things. I wish all these companies would just name things more transparently. Um, even Strathmore, the 500, 400, 300, 200 series stuff, at least that's easier to understand with 500 being the best quality, 400 being, you know, okay. 300 being very much student grade and 200 being for children. Even that to me is less confusing than calling something premium and then calling something pro or expert because all three of those are synonymous to me. So um, I'd still find the naming system to be a little bit confusing, but you know, anyway, I'm looking forward to the 24 day calendar coming in and I'm really looking forward to going through the 12 day calendar. So I'm going to do it in a couple of different ways. For the 12 day calendar, we're going to do it. Um, Alexandria Ryan. I don't know why I've linked on her name. We're going to do it Alexandria Ryan style where we just do the whole calendar at once. And then for the 24 day calendar, if it arrives before December, we're going to do it Ashen style where we do one a day. And uh, I'm looking forward to both. I'm so sorry I blinked on her name because I really like her videos and I like watching her while I'm working. Uh, she just has such a friendly personality. So hopefully you guys look forward for that, to that for the art kit. This one's going to be a live stream unboxing swatch, which is terrifying because we're still living out of boxes and we don't have any furniture. So that's going to be exciting. And I'm also hoping to do some sort of like practical art piece with this kind of the same way I did with the artist loft art kit that I reviewed a couple years ago and the dollar dollar tree challenge so hopefully you guys will look forward to that and hopefully you guys will look forward to the field test for the Arteza watercolors I'm 
kind of dreading it, but hopefully we can figure it out together. And hopefully I'll see you guys again soon with another installment of our student grade showdown. Hopefully you guys found this helpful, useful, and informative. And hopefully it's helpful towards helping you help, 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 helping you make art a habit. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye guys. Thank you.